Awards. This is to the Sonia Payne House. Happy Valentine's Day to each and every one of you, not only the staff, but each and every one over here. Happy Valentine's Day to each and every one. All the very best for lots of love, lots of happiness, and everything that God can give you should come to you. All the best. I love you all. Uh, I'm actually very happy to come over here because uh, I feel so good to be among students and I do feel that uh, you are the future which is going to make a world of difference to India as it is today. It's such a different world today where the opportunities in the entire universe have changed and the Indian minds have been recognized all over the world. So when I go to America, they say, where are you from? So I say from India. Oh, all the intelligent people come from India. So I didn't know that, but now I know. Because they told me so, that all the intelligent people come from India. And this is not only they saying it, five of the biggest multi-technology companies in the world, the, the persons who lead those companies, including Microsoft, are all Indians of Indian origin, and of Indian minds and of Indian blood. So can you imagine? So congratulations to them and to each one of you that there is an ambition and operation where the, not only that I am recognizing that you are brilliant, but the entire world recognizes that the Indian mind is the most brilliant of all the minds in the whole world. So what are we waiting for? Why is it that we have a kind of a hesitancy to really say, this is not our aspiration goal. I was reading a book uh, on girl power, written by my daughter-in-law, and one of the stories is about a girl, I think her name is Archana. The girl had an accident, and she lost her leg. So she had to have an artificial limb to be done, a prosthesis, which uh, meant that she had an artificial leg. And obviously everybody felt sorry for her and felt, oh my god, now she can't achieve anything in life because she's lost one leg in this accident. And the story goes on to this way, that everybody looked up on her and felt sorry for her. But in her mind she said, I'm going to do something which nobody has done. And she decided to climb Mount Everest. This is a story of about 12 years ago, 14 years ago. And the person took a mind that I will, in spite of that handicap, climb Mount Everest. Mount Everest is difficult for the normal men. And to be able to reach Mount Everest is a humongous task. Training, bite, frostbites, difficulty, slippages, all sorts of complication took place. This girl, at age three years ago, in spite of a prosthesis leg, climbed Mount Everest. She was an Indian, an Indian girl, a girl who didn't have a leg and worked on a prosthesis and still challenged herself and went. Only an Indian can do something like that. Can we not think of her as a wonderful person? So we have examples in our lives where we can do tremendously and there is something which is possible to do and each one of us is capable of doing it. If a girl, a girl, a girl without a leg can climb Mount Everest, what is it that we, you and I, who don't have a less one, one leg, cannot achieve in our lives? And there are hundreds and hundreds of examples of men and women, Indian girls and women, who have reached and achieved the impossible as far as that is concerned. I'm going to share with you a book. I have a book in the car and I leave it here in your library and you can certainly look at it. And there are stories of 50 women who have done extraordinary achievements in things like that which is done. Closer home to story. Let's look at various times when 
people found it difficult how to do it. And many times people ask me, what is it that stops us from going to the next step and next stage? It's fear. We are always afraid that if we try, we will fail. We are always afraid that she is better than me in this particular subject. So how will I do better than her in that subject if I have an aspiration to actually stand first? What is it that in business you have entrepreneurs over here from your alumni who must have been afraid so many times as to what to do in the next step for the purposes of it? The secret is out now in the open. And most of the people who do entrepreneurs are more afraid than people who don't. So people who actually try to do are petrified. Because including myself, I'm being an entrepreneur, I'm a first generation entrepreneur, my father was a doctor. And when I started business, I was petrified that I would not succeed. But the best thing is to look far, be ambitious, but at the same time, start one step today. So anything that you feel you're not good at, including a particular subject, let's say you have six subjects to study, and you feel that one of the subjects you're not good at, bound to be one subject which you're going to be weaker than all the other subjects that you do. So the secret is to pick that subject first, start reading one page at a time, and every day take only one step in that subject. I did the same when I was in BCom. I was somewhere in the middle of my class when I was in the second year of BCom. And in those days, the BCom examination was four years. It was uh, 10 plus uh, 11 pl uh, plus three years. BCom was three years. In the last two years, we had 10 papers together. And uh, one of the subjects of economics, I was extremely weak at. And two years before that, somebody told me how to actually do it. And he said, read very little of your weakest subject. So I really took up that person seriously and I read it and I hated it. I could hardly read two pages at a time and I left it aside because it just was my weakest subject. And I always feared about it. You won't believe, because I did well in that subject in BCom, because I followed this trick of mine on myself, that in the University of Mumbai, finally, because I scored well in my weakest subject also, I stood second in the University of Mumbai. Otherwise, I thought I would be nowhere. Simply because of that. So all of us remember that the thing that you are weakest at, whether in studies or in any other thing in your life that you are, step out and start doing. If you step out and start doing that thing which you are doing, I'm very bad at letter writing. Some people are, some people are not. So those people who are bad at letter writing, start writing letters, even if it is to yourself. Just make letter writing and take one step at a time. When you do that type of work, you will automatically find after the 50th time that you've written, you are going to be extremely good at. That's another secret. So you keep on doing it to yourself, even though you don't do it to the outside world. And after the 50th letter that you've written to yourself, you'll find that you're good at, reasonably better at letter writing than you were when you did the first time. There's another secret that I want to share with you. It is something that you want to learn a new thing, as far as that is concerned, and it's very easy. Everybody says that to learn new things, including new languages, new subjects and others is extremely difficult to do, especially to be proficient. So a research in Harvard has shown that if you want to be proficient at something, you have to spend 10,000 hours to be proficient on that. So whether it's a language or it is a subject or it is anything, you must consistently with focus spend 10,000 hours. But there's another research which is a better research, at least for people like you and me, who want a quick fix about how we must learn. And that is that you start doing that one hour a day. And if you do it for three months, you'll be reasonably good at that subject. 
So, if you want to be reasonably good and not a professional champion in learning Spanish, for example, spend one hour a day and you will become proficient in that language. So anything in life that you want to take, like for instance, I do new businesses. Over a period of years, we have done new businesses that we do. So when you're doing a new business, obviously you don't know that business. There's no way that you can do it. So what do you do? Spend one hour a day on that new business, focus on it, and in three months to six months time, you'll be reasonably good at it. And it's shocking. It has worked for me, and I'm only 70 years old. And I've done it 50 times. Every time I wanted to do something, I just pick on a thing which I'm weak at or I'm afraid of. And I spend one hour a day for six months on it. And I promise you that I become reasonably proficient on that. This is a secret I'm telling you. Because in life we will have many things that we think we cannot do. And I promise you there is nothing in life that you cannot do. But you have to be willing to think about it in front and this is how it's to be done. So first thing in life was, what I shared with you is that you can achieve anything because you have the best brains in the world, because you are an Indian. So you have the best brains in the world, you can do anything you want in life. The second thing is, if you take one step at a time to keep improving, you will become so good, you will be surprised. And the third thing which I said is, if you spend one hour a day on something which you're weak at, or something new you want to learn, whether it's language, whether it's a new field of uh, business, or it is anything, take out one hour a day of that new business. Every single day for six months. You will be reasonably proficient on something which you're no good at. And it's a secret which very few people are taught. Because nobody wants to give away this secret. I'm giving you this secret to you in order to see that you are never afraid of anything in your life that you want to start with. You'll be able to do it. And that's the beauty of what you learn in colleges that you come to, including the Mansukani College. That they teach you entrepreneurship, they teach you new activities, they teach you new things to step out of the box in order to make a world of difference. And it is that grounding in management that becomes important. The skill sets are important, but the attitude to skill set is even more important. So don't just learn the subject. You have to learn to have an attitude which is positive. If you have a positive attitude to reach a certain objective, there is nothing that cannot be achieved in our lives. I gave you an example of this young lady. Let me give you a second example of Abdul Kalam who was our president of India and a spaceman. The man was given to go to outer space, but was given a budget which was only 10% of what was given to NASA to go to space. 10%. Can you imagine trying to do something or buying something which you have only 10% of the money, but you have to achieve something. Abdul Kalam didn't look back. He started working on that space mission. And at the end of it, he achieved it at the cost of 12% of the budget of NASA. He arranged a space mission to outer space, which made India go into outer space at a much lower cost than that. And of course, the best example in the world of what you can achieve, irrespective of what happened, is the case of Mr. Chaiwala. You know this Chaiwala? <laughs> this Chaiwala was a Chaiwala in Gujarat. A poor man coming from a poor family had no, no idea of what he's going to do but decided that he wants to improve himself and serve people and do more in life. He finally, after lots and lots of years and hard work, finally became the chief minister of Gujarat and he went there. But he wasn't satisfied because he said, I want to do more. I want to do much more. So this man who was an ordinary Chaiwala then went and took new steps and then became finally the Prime Minister of India. And he is not satisfied there. He now wants to be an international man. And he goes internationally everywhere to see that he becomes one of the great leaders of the entire world. So you will see him in Washington, 
you will see him in London, you will see him in China, you will see him in Malaysia, you will see him in all the countries of the world. So, if a chai wala can become Prime Minister, why can't you and I who have the similar brains and similar mind be able to achieve something which is extraordinary? So I wanted to tell you that uh, I want to congratulate Principal Swati Sable for the wonderful leadership role that she has been taking in the college of bringing about a significant change in the minds of young people. And I think that's extremely important for all of us over here today to bend these minds because they are the future of India that we want to bring up out. We have so much hope in the aspirations that we have. So thank you very much, Swati Sable. Thank you very much for all the teachers, all the other people, the principals of our other colleges, the vice principals, all the other people, the students who have come from various colleges and the students of this college. Congratulations. I wish you the very, very best. Enjoy your life. Have a great time. Don't do. Work hard and party hard. But don't forget to work hard before you party hard. You can't party hard and not work hard. So you have to work. So when you party hard, you must work harder and then party harder. But don't forget to work harder. Because if you don't work harder, you will achieve nothing. But if you only party hard, it won't work. Because you will achieve nothing. You will be a zero. And I don't want anyone who is here the young generation of India to become a zero. I want you all to become leaders of tomorrow, the heroes of India, and everyone in the world look up to you and me for having a wonderful, wonderful year. Happy Valentine's Day. Enjoy your life. Love you all.